morning. Wednesday, January 12th. That's right, that's what it is. Hey, let's have a prayer before we dive into God's Word. Mark chapter uh, 1 is where we're at in the Bible, if you're following along. But let's have a prayer together. Father, I ask you to take care of my wife as she drives on these crazy roads and uh, other people that are on these highways too, Father God. And uh, I thank you that you are with us wherever we are. And I pray for this time in your word that, Jesus, you would show up and your spirit would do the work of giving us the truth and hope we need and the trust in you would increase and the fears would decrease. We come to you thanking you that you are our God and King. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Mark chapter 1. And uh, this is where Jesus comes in verse 14. After his uh, time in the desert, Jesus comes into the public eye and begins his ministry. And um, this is what it says. After John the Baptist was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So I want to juxtapose two things. John being in prison, John the Baptist, who had such a successful, wonderful ministry, thrown into prison for preaching the truth. Jesus comes. In the bad news of John being put in prison, Jesus comes to say, the prisoners can be set free. That God loves the world, that there is good news to be heard, to be proclaimed, to be believed. And um, in John the Baptist's case, man, did he need that good news. And he even asked the disciples to go and ask Jesus, are you the one? Because John didn't expect to be thrown in prison. I think what he expected was that he would be the forerunner of Jesus. Jesus would come and Jesus would grab John into his posse and all the disciples and that they would go and change the world together and here John's thrown in jail. So John needs this good news too. And I was going through what, Je what, what Jesus said in Mark 1 14 about the kingdom of God. And this is, this is what, it, what he said. He said, the time has come the time is now. The time to be um, to know that the good news affects your life is not in 30, 40 years when you when you pass into the next stage of your life in, in heaven with Jesus. It's, Christianity is not just about going to heaven when you die. Um, Christianity is about the fact that Jesus has brought the kingdom to earth. He did it 2,000 years ago. He started building his kingdom here on earth. 20, 22 years ago. That's right. Jesus came to start building the kingdom then. It started being built then on earth because that's where the kingdom is going to end up is on earth. And the kingdom of God has come near. The good news about Jesus is that he brought heaven down. Um, he made it so that heaven isn't off far away, inaccessible to human beings, but he brought the kingdom of heaven close. It is accessible. The kingdom of God is accessible to normal people like me and you. It is obtainable. That means you and me can have the kingdom of God in our lives. So we can be in the kingdom here and now. And when you go to your job and you do your job well and you are um, being a good witness to the people around you, you're, you're being a peacemaker, you're, you're working hard, you're improving the workplace, you're encouraging your friends and family, um, you are telling them the good news that Jesus loves them. And that's the simplest way to visit. When someone's having a hard time, you just love on them well, buy them a coffee, get them a donut, buy them lunch, write them a card, and you just say those three words, remember Jesus loves you. Well, that's four. It's four words. Never mind. Anyway, um, you are building the kingdom of God now. And when Jesus says the kingdom of God is close, it means it's accessible. It means it's obtainable 
For us, the common man, it is free. It is obtained freely to all who believe. The only religious system where you don't have to do anything to get eternal life, to have a different quality of life. You just come as you are without money. The Bible says, I invite people to come and get living water and food, the bread of life, without cost. It's the only religion where it's free. You don't have to perform. You don't have to check a box. You just have to believe that God loves you and he sent Jesus to save you. And the kingdom is there offered freely. The king wants to be your friend. You know, um, the prime minister and the presidents of the world want you to vote for them, but they're not going to be your friend. Jesus the king says, I will be your friend. I will be closer than a brother. That's the good news about Jesus. And all you have to do is repent. We talked about that. Turn around, face God, walk towards him. That's repentance. It's belief. You grasp the kingdom. You receive it. When somebody gives you a gift, you just take it. Um, you act on that little bit of faith you have and say, yes, I believe. I'm going to give you my life. You are my king. And Jesus says it's for those who respond. You know, Jesus doesn't force his kingdom on anybody. It's going to take over the world eventually. But, you know, um, happy are the people that gladly choose him now because his kingdom is going to take over the world. And all those who hate him and all those who um, decry him and, and reject Jesus Christ will see that he is the king and they will bow their knee. And they will lose their fight eventually. Jesus says it's for those who respond, who follow. Jesus is taking care of. Of all the preliminaries, all you got to do is take the ticket. Free ticket. That's all you got to do. Um, if somebody gave you a beautiful box seats at a Canucks game and, uh, and a free meal to watch the game live and the gas money to get there and the hotel money and that was the prize package they gave you, I bet you you'd take it. Jesus is offering so much more. He's prepared it for you. He's prepared the kingdom. I go to prepare a place, he says, for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. Jesus is saying he is preparing the kingdom for his people. And Jesus has paid for your ticket with his blood. He paid it all, right? You are, you are just offered this as a gift. It's a beautiful thing. Jesus bought the kingdom to us. He brought the kingdom down to us. Um... And he says, you need to think about this. You need to assess your life and say to yourself, am I okay the way I am? Or do I need to take advantage of this offer? Because so far, me trying to do my life on my own, build my own kingdom, has failed. And uh, Jesus says to consider these things, that he stands at the door and he knocks. And if anyone hears his voice and opens the door, Jesus will come in and uh, be with them, have communion with them, have supper with them. Jesus wants to be close to you. And he has come near, but God waits to be wanted. He, it's up to you whether you'll take advantage of it. So many of us, um, we have these spurts where we're like, okay, I'm going to pursue God. I'm going to chase after him. And then, you know, the feelings go away and the honeymoon's over and it starts to become a bit of a, you know, I, I've got to put some effort into growing and you just kind of back off. And Jesus says, look, take advantage of it. Grab hold of it. That's your effort to, to take Jesus' hand. He offers his hand to help you. Will you take the hand, right? Every day. So a couple thoughts. If the time has come, we need to not miss the boat. The kingdom of God is here. It's available now. There's a few sayings that are holding true to this day. If you snooze, you lose. Um, don't miss the boat. Limited time offer. Seize the day. Jesus says, don't miss this chance. God has come near. He's offering you eternal life and an eternal quality of life now to change your life. The kingdom has come to man because we couldn't get there on our own. And Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to do it all for you. I'm going to offer it to you. And accessible means Jesus has taken care of the heavy lifting. He doesn't tie a large burden on your back. 
of religious rules and performance, and then you get the kingdom. He offers it freely. Pharisees, religious people, tie rules to people's backs. Jesus says that that you tie a heavy burden to people's backs when you're religious and you don't help them at all. Jesus says it's all free. It's all joy, knowing that he's given you the kingdom. He's done the heavy lifting. And I love that Jesus comes to us and stands at the door and knocks. And he just says, I love you. I love you the way you are. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, tired, broken, and I will heal you. I will give you rest. That's what he's about. He wants to give us paradise eventually one day and for now his peace until that day comes and the beautiful thing about this kingdom is it's not a scam it is guaranteed to be what you and i need and he knows how much we need him and that's why he came and so uh today come to him put all your hope in jesus because he's what you need from above I've been down to the river No, I ain't the same prodigal return And all my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterday's gone I'm no stranger to the prison And I've worn shackles and chains And I've been freed and forgiven I'm not going back I'll never be the same And all my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterday's gone And all my sins are forgiven Yeah, and I've been washed by the blood It's a kind of pain that just breaks me Breaks him down to his knees God, I've been broken more than a time or two But he picked me up And he showed me what it means to be a man And all my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterdays are gone And I'm washed by the blood And all my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterdays are gone And all my sins are forgiven For oh, I'm washed by the blood and I've been washed by blood. Good job, Larry Fleet. Love that song. Hey, let me let me lead you in a prayer. Father, I pray that your spirit would be unrelenting in wooing us towards yourself, and we hear you knocking and heed the call to open the door and and commune with you. And uh, I pray that you'll give us faith in the the presence of fear. Help us not to 
be afraid, but to um, to feel your arms wrapped around us when we need it. I pray, Father, for anybody that has not yet taken that leap. And if you're if you're watching, you need to pray this prayer for the first time. Pray it, Jesus. I open my life's door to you. You are the King. I repent of my sin and believe. Help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. God is with us. You guys have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.